I think during the Cold War, uh, there was clearly a risk of nuclear catastrophe. If one reads the memoirs of the Cuba crisis, if one learns about the cavalier way in which nuclear battlefield weapons were used in the 1950s, if one learns about other nuclear accidents or misunderstandings, it's clear that uh, we were perhaps lucky rather than wise, as uh, McNamara put it, to get through the Cold War without a disaster. And I think you can ask the question, if we knew the real risk, would we have been happy? In my book, I said I would not have been happy because the risk was perhaps one in three or one in six or something like that. And uh, if you had asked, would you accept a one in three or one in six risk of the devastation of European civilization um, on the alleged grounds that will thereby reduce the chance of uh, the Russians taking over, I would have said no. And I think many people would have they realized just how high the risk was. Uh, it's very hard in retrospect to know just how lucky we were in getting through what was inevitable. But it, the more we learn about what happened in the 60s, the more it seems that we could have been unlucky, and that would indeed have been a catastrophe, uh, far, far worse than anything that could have happened if we'd not had nuclear weapons at all. And so I think uh, that was a real threat. Now we are at a greater threat of some nuclear weapons going off somewhere in the world than was the case ever in the past. But of course there are fewer nuclear weapons worldwide. There has been progress in bringing down the arsenals of the US and Russia and putting them on a longer fuse. Uh, so the main threat now is of a few nuclear weapons being used in the Middle East or North Korea or somewhere like that. That in itself is of course uh, a deeply uh, serious matter but it's not the same as the kind of catastrophe that could have happened in the Cold War. But we shouldn't be too complacent because if we look back over the last century and think of the geopolitical changes then the Soviet Union rose and fell, there were two world wars, etc. So even though we may not now be subject to the same threat as we were in the Cold War, we can't rule out 50 years from now a new standoff between new superpowers and a new arms race that might be as drastic or more so than the Cold War and handled less luckily or less well. So the global nuclear threat that hung over us during the Cold War is only in abeyance, in my opinion. The concern, of course, in the headlines is about Iran, but frankly, I think we should be more concerned about Pakistan and North Korea. Those are two nations that do have nuclear weapons, and in both cases, there's concern about the motives of the regime, and also in Pakistan, concerns about the control of nuclear weapons, whether there are all scenarios under which they are safely under government control. So I think we are concerned about that. There's also a renewed uh, worry about further proliferation, because of course, if we look back 20 years from now, we would then have been gratified that there were only 10 nuclear powers. People talked about 20 or 30. That hasn't happened. But nonetheless, we can't rule out a further burst of proliferation, certainly one that would be triggered if the uh, Iranians do get a bomb. And also, we have to worry about the uncertainties due to the proliferation of nuclear power. Because nuclear power is, of course, being taken seriously in more countries. And if that does go ahead, then, of course, unless there is a very strengthened IAEA, one is very concerned about the security of the fuel cycle. One would be happy if there was a system whereby fuel was brought in at the beginning and taken away at the end, and there was some uh, multinational organization which dealt with the fuel recycling. But unless that happens, I think one should not be at all relaxed about the prospect of nuclear power spreading more widely worldwide. I think one of the big disappointments is that the five uh, prime NPT signatories have not done more to reduce their arsenals. Uh, to be fair, the Soviet Union and the US have cut theirs since the time of the Cold War by a factor of several, and they are on a longer fuse. Um, but 
uh, other countries perhaps need to step in now. And it is clear that if other countries cut their arsenals, as the UK has done to some extent, incidentally, but more important, if they, in their publicly stated strategies, attach less weight to the importance of nuclear weapons, this would be a disincentive to proliferation. If the five major nuclear powers uh, continue to uh, maintain a high nuclear arsenal and to maintain publicly that it's very important, then clearly it's unreasonable to expect no other country to want to emulate them. So I think it's disappointing that after the encouraging episode of the uh, American Gang of Four, their European counterparts, and of Obama's Prague speech, there has in the last three years been less progress. Indeed, things have moved in reverse direction with uh, uh, North Korea and the concern about uh, Iran and the very severe concern, in my view, about Pakistan. <laughs>